Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we are going to discuss the next three questions of that paper, October, November 2019, Pure Mathematics 1. So this is the question number five here. The diagram shows a solid cone which has a slant height 15 centimeter and a vertical height at centimeter. Show that the volume V centimeter cube of the cone is given by this. And the volume formula for the volume of cone when radius is r and vertical height h is given as 1 over 3 pi r square h. So let me draw it height and radius here. So this is radius r and this is h. So by using the Pythagoras theorem, we can have the r value in terms of h. So from Pythagoras theorem, r square is equal to 15 square minus h square 15 square minus h, h square so it is 225 minus h square so once we have r square the volume v will be 1 upon 3 1 upon 3 pi r square h so we'll replace this value 1 upon 3 pi r is 225 minus h square into h which will turn to the same thing which we have to solve that is 1 upon 3 pi 225 h minus h q so i hope it is clear let's do the next part of this so here is the question uh, part 2 given that h can vary h can vary find the value of h for which v is stationary so for the stationary value we know that dv over dh should be equal to zero so from here you will get the value of h so v is given from the first part is given as 1 upon 3 pi pi 225 h minus h q so dv over dh will be 1 upon 3 pi times 225 h differentiation will be 1 and h cube differentiation is going to be 3 h square so for the stationary point for the stationary value this should be 0 and that's why 225 minus 3 h square should be equal to 0 for from which we'll get h square is equal to 225 over 3 that is 7 and 5 75 and hence h is equal to square root of 75 we will not take the negative sign because h cannot be negative so 25 3 is a so it is 5 root 3 this is the height h for which this uh, v has a stationary value and now we need to determine by showing all the necessary work that nature of the stationary point for the nature of the stationary point we need to get d2v of dh square that is the second derivative of the v with respect to h and we only have to tell the nature of stationary point and from for this value we got only one value so of course it would be either maximum or minimum that will we will decide from the side from the differentiation so the differentiation of this is going to be 1 upon 3 pi it's a constant and 225 differentiation is 0 minus 3 h square differentiation is 6 h so if we'll solve it it is going to be 1 upon 3 pi and minus 6 h so it will always be negative we can see it is going to be negative because h is positive and we'll put it here so so d2 d2 v over d h square at h is equal to 5 root 3 it's not required to solve it but let's put and we'll write it as a negative one so it is 2 2 times 2 5 is 10 so minus 10 root 3 and pi which is negative and hence we will the nature is maximum maximum v will be maximum at 
h is equal to 5 root 3. So I hope it is clear. Let's do the next question. So here's the question number sixth a part. Given that x is greater than 0, find the two smallest value or values of x in radians for which 3 tan 2x plus 1 is equal to 1. Show all the necessary working. So from here we can see that 3 tan of 2x plus 1 is 1. That's why tan of 2x plus 1 will be 1 over 3. So we will get 2x plus 1 this angle as tan inverse of 1 by 3 and this value in the radian is 0 0.3217 so it is I like 2 till 3 significant figure and we know in the tan in the tan the next angle we get by pi plus so the next angle that is 2x plus 1 will be pi plus 0 0.322 and which is 3.463 so for 3.46 and the next value will get 2x plus 1 again by adding another periodic property pi plus this value so pi plus 3.46 is equal to 6.6049 so from here we'll calculate the values of x and when you'll calculate the value of x from here it would be it is going to be the negative one so which will will not take because we know that x is greater than zero so from here these two equations will get the x value first value will get 3.46 minus 1 upon 2 and the next one is 6.6049 minus 1 upon 2 so let's calculate these values this value is 1.23 and this value is 2.803 and so on so it is 2.080 so two values of x the smallest value are going to be 1.23 and 2.80 so i hope it is clear let's do the next part of it Here's the B part. The function f is defined as fx is equal to 3 times cos square x minus 2 times sin square x. Defined in this uh, range domain that is x from 0 to pi inclusively. x plus fx in this form where a cos square x plus b is there. So we know the two identities in AS level. One is tan is equal to sin over cos and another is cos square plus sin square is equal to 1. So since we require in the cos, so we'll change this sign into the cos. So f of x become 3 times cos square x minus 2 times 1 minus cos square x. So it becomes 3 times cos square x minus 2 plus 2 cos square x. So we got 5 cos square x minus 2 so this is in this form we can mention also that what is the value of a a is 5 and b is equal to minus 2 otherwise it is not required so this is the final answer and the second part is find the range of the function range of this function f so for range we know that x is in between 0 to pi so cos will be cos x will be between minus 1 to 1 it will take all the values between these two so if we'll do the square of it so since square cannot be negative so it will be from 0 to 1 0 to 1 it, it's like if you have a cos graph it is like that and you are taking a square so this part will go up over here it is another graph like that so it will never be negative it will be always more than uh, above the x axis we can say and we require the range so we'll bring the fx in this place so it is 5 cos square x is less than or equal to 5 and greater than or equal to 0 or 0 is less than or equal to 5 times cos square x now if it is minus 2 because there was minus 2 I'm doing minus 2 here 
5 minus 2 here and again of course we have to do the minus 2 here also so we got this as fx fx between minus 2 and 3 so this is the function range of the function f here's question number 7 the diagram shows a three dimensional shape o a b c d e f g the base o a b c and the upper surface d e f g are identical horizontal rectangles the parallelogram o a e d o a e d and c b f g both lie in a vertical plane and point p and g are midpoints so these two are going to be equal and g are the midpoint of g is a midpoint of g f uh, unit vector i j and k are parallel to the o a o c respectively and the unit vector k is vertically upward of course in the direction of z the position vectors a c and d are given as o a is 6 i cap o c is 8 j cap and o d is 2 i cap plus 10 k cap and we need to express each of the vector p b and p q in terms of i j and k so from here we can see so from here from the diagram pb vector we can write pb as po vector plus oa vector and a b vector and at the same time i'll write pq vector as well pq p to q it is p to d P to D vector, D to G vector, and G to Q vector. So now we can see PO, PO is half of DO, that is negative of uh, OD, and OA is given 6 I cap, AB is exactly as OC because they are parallel vector and equal, so AB is same as uh, OC. And here in this PD is half of OD in the same direction and DG is going to be same as OC and GQ is half of GF and GF is same as CB or same as OA so they all are equal so it is directly GQ is half of OA vector so from here PB vector will be minus 1 upon 2 times o d vector half of this because p is a p is the midpoint of o d and plus o a is given already i'll write next uh, next line and a b is a b is same as o c i discussed so it is going to be o c vector and here p q vector will be p d vector p d is half of o d and in the same direction so it is positive od vector dg dg is dg is same as oc vector oc vector and gq is half of the oa vector so let's put the values of this so pb vector is going to be minus 1 upon uh, minus half of od so half of this will be i cap plus 5k cap plus OA vector is 6i cap and plus OC vector is 8j cap which we will solve 8 minus 1 7 i cap and 6 sorry it's j so it would be back. 6 minus 1 5 i cap plus 8j cap and minus 5k cap and here pq vector pq vector will be 1 upon 2 od so i'll write directly half of od is going to be i cap plus 5 k cap plus oc vector is 8 j cap and plus half of oa vector is 3 i cap which is 3 plus 1 4 i cap plus 8 j cap plus 5 k cap so now we have pb vector pb vector 5i cap plus 8j cap minus 5k cap 
and PQ vector as 4i cap plus 8j cap minus, I'm oh, sorry, plus 5k cap. So that's the uh, vectors. Let's do the next part of it. So the next part is determine whether P is nearer to Q or to B. So if we can find the length of PB vector and PQ vector, that is magnitude of these two, then we can decide it from there. So let me bring it here. So here we can see we have PB vector, PQ vector. PB vector is 5i cap plus 8j cap minus 5k cap and PQ vector is 4i cap plus 8j cap plus 5k cap. So let's find its distance that is magnitude of these two vector. So PB vector will be square root of this uh, square of these components that is 4 square 16 or oh, sorry 5 square that is 25 plus 8 square 64 plus 5 square that is 25. So it is going to be a 25 plus 25 50 plus this it is 114. 114 and PQ vector is magnitude of PQ vector is going to be square root of 4 square 16 plus 8 square 64 plus 5 square that is 25. It is 64 plus 16 is 80 uh, 105 105 so we can see from here pq pq vector is um, magnitude of pq vector is less than magnitude of pb vector so from here we can say directly that q is nearer to p i hope it is clear so let's do the next part use a scalar product to find the angle between b p q let me bring that diagram here we need to find this angle for that we are going to use this dot product a dot b is equal to magnitude of a magnitude of b and cos of the angle between them so here we have pb vector we can find we'll write pb vector again 5i cap plus 8j cap plus oh, sorry 5 minus 5k cap and pq vector is equal to 4i cap plus 8j cap and plus 5k cap so pb vector dot pq vector will be 5 4 is a 20 8 8 is a 64 and 5 5 is a 25 so this is going to be uh, 59 and magnitude of pb we have already it is square root of 114 and magnitude of pq vector also we have that is square root of 105 so from here we can directly tell what is the angle in terms of cos cos of angle b p q is equal to a dot b that is 59 upon square root of 114 multiplied by square root of 105 so the angle b p q is equal to cosine inverse of this value that is 59 over root 114 into root 105 we will calculate it from the calculator so it is 57 0.36 and so on so it is 57.4 degree so i hope it was of some help so we'll be discussing the next few questions in the next video thank you so much